It's mad to think nowadays that you've got different categories of hot hatchbacks. You've got the Super Mini, which is the likes of the Up GTI. And then you've got the Family Hatchback, which is the likes of a Ford Focus RS. And then comes the Small Hatchback. And for me, there's one manufacturer which stands out, and that's Mini. It's a perfect blend of looks, refinement, and sportiness. I'm Max Aftervani, and welcome to Driven Plus. This is the Mini three-door hatch John Cooper works, and it's finished off in this beautiful starlight blue metallic. I think this is the best colour to have this car in, personal opinion. John Cooper work badge, let's start the, uh, the counter for today, let's see how many we come across. There's a few of them. The bumper redesigned from the original Mini Cooper, looks stubby, looks fat, looks sporty, I love that. Uh, LED daytime running lights, and the indicators light up as well. Let's pop the hood, let's have a look underneath. Now before I open the bonnet, let's see if this vent does a job. Oh, well it's all for looks. Anyway, look how compact that is. It's the BMW B48 engine, two litre, four cylinder, 228 horsepower, 320 newton meters of torque. Not bad, pretty impressive figures considering this thing weighs 1,295 kilos. It's a nice sized car, got a lovely stance about it. There's a lot of colours going on, though I will admit, but it works well, it blends all nicely together. 17 inch alloy wheels, 320 mil uh, discs, uh, JCW wheel hub caps and JCW calipers, four pots. JCW badge on the indicator, they're everywhere. And you've got the chrome strip going along here and with the chrome uh, fuel cap and the door handles as well. It breaks it up quite nicely. I do like the way this thing looks on the sides and you've got a JCW wheel hub badge on the back. Back end of the car, this has the aerodynamic kit. So you've got the rear spoiler, you've got the chrome accent which wraps all the way around the car. Union Jack taillights, really like them on this thing. JCW badge there, that's another one. All this plastic uh, venting, but it looks good. And you've got the twin tailpipes, which are put together. I'm so glad they put together instead of separated down here. Just looks more sporty. Let's start this thing up. And give it a bit of a rev. A few pops and bangs. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's have a look how big the boot is. It's not a bad size given the size of the car, 211 litres. You lift this another tray up, you're getting the distal storage down there. Seats down, 731 litres. Let's go have a look inside. So I was immediately greeted with another JCW badge on the door sill. Now these seats is a leather and Alcantara combo. They're quite firm, so they might be uncomfortable for long journeys. But having said that, they look great. It's like a bucket style seat. And you've got a John Cooper Works badge. Again, on the headrest, steering wheel, nice and thin and grippy. It's leather with the red uh, stitching. It looks, looks well. Uh, JCW badge on the steering wheel. You've got your uh, cruise control buttons and the infotainment controls there. Uh, speedometer. Now I'll say this is probably the least sporty part about the Mini uh, JCW because yeah, you've got the John Cooper Works badge again and you've got a checkered flag from 120 MPH to 160 MPH. Although when I was driving this before, it was quite hard to see what revs I was in because the rev count is so small. Now I like to drive cars in the manual mode, so I was looking at what rev I was in. It was hard to see, so I think Mini should have swapped them around ever uh, where the speedometer is with the rev counter. It just works better. Uh, entertainment system, it's actually very, very similar to that of a BMW, so for the likes of myself, it's easy to navigate. And all the, the roundel here lights up in a different colours and it looks well with the rev counter, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, automatic gearbox, ZF8 gearbox, you know my opinion on them. Looks, they're so good. So Mini made a good, uh, well, Mini slash BMW made a good choice with that. As I'm going to try and attempt to get in the back now, I don't know how well this is going to turn out to be. Whoa. In the back, it's not a bad place to be. You've got a cup holder there, Harman Kardon sound system, you've got a panoramic sunroof, and you've also got your own glass roof there. It doesn't open, but at least the, the fly net opens, so it adds a little bit more natural light in here. Yeah, it ain't bad, but I don't know what it's going to be like with the seat. <laughs> No, this ain't lasting. <laughs> mm. 
let's get out on the road. Now you do have three driving modes to choose from. You've got green, which is eco, um, so you can save miles, but we're not into that. Now you've got mid, so your balance setting, which is your normal driving mode, and you've got your sport. It goes down a gear, everything turns red, the exhaust livens up a bit, the car sharpens up. I'll put the gearbox into manual mode, use an S, and use the flappy paddles. I will say, to be fair, given the size of car and weight, it, it feels a heavy car. The steering is too heavy, there's a high centre of gravity. The brakes work well, although saying that, it does tuck in nicely round the corner. It sounds well as well. The gearbox is good, ZF. Yeah. Good car. Solid, refined. Yeah, I will say, one thing I'm really struggling to deal with is where the rev counter is with the speedometer. Speedometer, when you're going through the twists like this, it makes no sense. I'd rather the rev counter be massive because then you know when to change gear. So for me, one bad thing is the size of the rev counter. It's too small. It does tuck in quite nicely, I will say. It's playful, very playful. It's nimble and agile. It's a B-road smasher, this car. Yeah, the traction control working its way. This is a corner smasher. It loves corners. And the auto box is good. Would I prefer a manual box? Maybe so, maybe you feel a bit more engaged. But having said that, it's a brilliant box this. And it's fast in a straight line. More to 60, 6.2 seconds. Top speed, 153 miles per hour. 150 in, in one of these, that's mad. Yeah, for me, the steering wheel is way, way too heavy for what it is. It needs to be playful, it needs to be lighter. It's like too heavy. It doesn't need to be too light because then you lose your sense of um, connectivity. But yeah, they've tuned this too heavy to what it needs to be. There's a numb feeling. You get a heads up display, which is nice. Now, visibility wise, it's good. You get a nice panoramic sunroof, which lets nice natural light in. Looking through the rear view mirror is good. But the windscreen is very, very far away. And you get this boxy like feel. It feels bigger than what it is inside. You don't feel small, which is good. Now, the suspension setup is identical to that of a Cooper S but the springs and the dampers have been retuned, so they're a lot more firmer and you can feel that. The ride is harsh, but then again, it's a sports car. Combine this harsh suspension with these firm seats. It's, it's a pretty uncomfortable place to be, but when you're going for it, it's a nice feeling to be fair. You can really chuck this in the corners and it kind of skitters along the back end follows suit. Yeah, good stuff. MPG, expect around 32 to 33. Given the engine size and power, I'm pretty impressed with that to be fair. And on a run, you'd probably be in the 40s. This car does quite a lot to be fair. But I got to admit, I thought there'd be a lot of creaks and knacks going on, but there's none. The build quality is very good. It's put together ever so well. I suppose that's thanks to its being uh, owned by a BMW. <laughs> this is a nice corner. Yeah, the four pot Rembo doing their thing. Traction control digging away. There is a bit of a disconnect between the steering wheel. I just think it's too heavy for this car, but you really can chuck it around the corner. There's a bit of roll, but some lowering springs will sort that out. Yeah, you can really have fun in this. 
Ooh. Yeah, set of low wind springs on this. Jobs are good on. This is an absolute beast in the corners. And it's got a nice soundtrack. I will admit, I am a fan. It's a strong engine. I just think maybe what Mini could have done is adopted that of the BMW M cars. Could they have put the rev counter on the heads up display? I think that would have changed the game for this car because yeah, I'm really struggling to know when to change because it's so hard to look. It really is. Thank you for watching Driven Plus today, guys. Let us know your thoughts on the Mini JCW today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.